Hey, welcome back everyone. This is Ian bringing you the sixth video in this AI series with the new Boston. In this video, I'm going to show you this platform called Prompt Layer. Prompt Layer is this really neat tool that has an API that we can use on top of OpenAI to do a lot of really cool things. In particular, we can track the history of all of our prompts that we're using. We can rate those prompts. We can add metadata to those prompts. There's all kinds of cool things. So we're gonna go over that in this video and getting set up with it is super simple. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. This is the website right here, promptlayer.com. It'll be linked in the description below. You'll wanna log in or sign up and then log in and create a API key. So generating an API key is really easy. Once you're logged in, the first thing you're gonna see it at the home page on the guide tab is this create new API key button. Also the instructions for installing, pip install prompt layer, really straightforward. So just two steps here and then a couple lines of code whenever you get into your actual code base. So let's do a quick kind of a tour of what we have here in the dashboard and then we'll jump over to our code and I'll show you how it works. Once you're logged in, you have your guide. Now you're not gonna have anything on the left-hand side here until you actually integrate this into your code base. But once you start using it with OpenAI, every time you make a request over to the chat completion API, it's going to log that request over here. So this is gonna create a history. You can view the history from the history tab. It's essentially this right here, but then as you click on each of these items in the history, it'll show you everything about that particular prompt. And so in this case, we have our system prompt, and then we have our initial user prompt, and then we have our initial response from the assistant. One really nice thing about prompt layer is that it tells you exactly how much a certain request costs. So in this case, this request costs 0 0.000258. Super cheap, which is great. But if you're over in the OpenAI dashboard and you're looking at your usage, you can see how much overall you've spent. You can see if it was GPT 3.5 or if it was GPT 4. But for each you know, granular request, you don't get to see how much it costs. You get to see the tokens, which you can see the total tokens here as well, 143 tokens. So you would have to calculate that on your own. In this case, it's calculated for you. Now there is a playground over in OpenAI, of course, we've seen that in a previous video, but over here with prompt layer, when we open this in the playground, it's actually gonna pick up where we left off with this request to the API. So we can toggle back and forth between the completions legacy API and the new chat completions API. We're gonna leave it on the chat completions API because that's how we initially sent this request. But you can see here's the system message. You know, you're a helpful coding assistant. You only answer coding related questions, nothing else. If you're asked a question that is not related to coding, you reply politely but decline to, to answer. And then the user's first question is, is HTML hard to learn? And then over there, we saw the response. You could run this again. And when you run it, you'll get the assistant response here in a second. So we wait a second for it to come back to us. And here's the assistant's answer. HTML or hypertext markup language is blah, blah, blah. So it's answering the user role question. Now you can add a new message here. So if you wanna to respond to the assistant, you can do that. So essentially you're getting granular control of what you would be doing in your code, but now you're doing it in the playground. That way you don't have to keep going back and changing your code over and over again. You can play with it here and you can kind of get a feel for which prompts are gonna work best for whatever it is you're trying to write. And then you can go implement that into your code base. So you'll notice they have functions down here. This is brand new. This is something that OpenAI does not currently have in their playground. This is similar to what we showed you in the function call video where you can actually have a list of functions that the chat completions API can see and it can see what the parameters are. And if it decides it wants to call one of those or if you explicitly tell it to call one of those functions, it'll send you back the arguments for that function that it wants you to call, including the name of the function. So that's really neat. You can integrate that here as well. There's also some additional stuff that does not exist inside of OpenAI, things like tags. So you can see here, it says no tags. So you can actually add some tags and some meta information to each of your requests and it'll allow you to keep better tracking of the requests. So for example, let's say you're building a chat bot for like Discord and your members of your Discord server are able to ask questions of this bot, and then those questions will be piped through the GPT 3.5 Turbo or GPT 4 APIs, and the responses will come back to the users in the Discord interface. 
that's really cool. Except if you're offering this as a free service, then people might take advantage of it. So you'd want to track that and you'd want to see, you know, who's asking what, how often are they asking, what are they asking, uh, you know, what is the, the cadence and everything. So you could add some information to your bot to where every request through to the chat completions API has some information, some meta information about the user from your Discord server that asked it, like their, their username or their user ID. That way, if somebody is abusing the system, you can see, okay, this user with this user ID is the one that's doing it. You know, they're overusing it or they're asking questions that aren't meant to be asked or whatever the case may be, you can go in there and you can identify those things. You can, of course, bake that into the application that you're writing, but having it right here in a dashboard is really nice because it's automatic and you can share it with other team members. So if you're working on larger projects and you're doing some prompt engineering, then you can have anybody on your team in your startup or company or just friends that you're working with be able to log in you can share this with them and they can look at the different prompts and the different logs and histories and the different tags everything that's available from this tool prompt layer it can be available to everyone that you're working with so there's a lot of really cool stuff this is just the playground and the history over here we have the registry so the registry is going to allow you to create templates where you can inject variables into like pre-made prompts and use those in your code so that's really neat. And then we have analytics. So this is gonna tell you, you know, the total cost of all the different requests, the average latency, how many requests there were, all kinds of things. And then it's gonna break it down into like pie charts and graphs and things like that. So this is really helpful to have in addition to whatever you have going on over in your default OpenAI dashboard. So let's head over to our code and see how we can integrate this because it's super easy. It's so easy, you're gonna be like, I can't believe it, it's only two or three lines of code, and then you're up and running in no time. If you remember, the first thing we wanted to do was a pip install prompt layer. That way we can import it up here. So if you're inside of your terminal, make sure that you have your virtual environment activated, and then just do a pip install prompt layer. Once you run that, it'll get installed. And of course, you can freeze that to your requirements.txt file if you're keeping track of all the different dependencies for your project. Everything after that is the same, you know, we're importing OS so that we can get access to our environment variables. In this case, you're going to want to take the API key and export it. So in your dashboard, you know, when you generate the key from your dashboard, you're going to want to copy that and export it as an environment variable. In this case, we named it prompt layer underscore API underscore key. You can name it whatever you like, just make sure that it matches what you have here. After that, you'll notice that we no longer import OpenAI, right? That's how we were doing it previously. We had import OpenAI. Now we're saying OpenAI, the variable is equal to prompt layer dot OpenAI. And that's all you have to do to layer prompt layer on top of OpenAI so that now it's going to track all the requests to OpenAI. We of course have to add the API key for OpenAI, same thing. We just take the OpenAI variable say dot API key is equal to, and then pull that API key from the environment variable that we have set. So that's the same as it was in all the previous videos. You're gonna make your request to OpenAI the same way that you would regularly, and then you just go over to prompt layer, your dashboard, you log in and you look at the log for all the requests that you made. So this doesn't actually change. Response is equal to OpenAI chat completion.create, tell it which model you want, tell it your messages. So you start with your system role, give it some content, start with your user role after that, give it some content. In this case, you know, who was the first president of the United States, set your temperature and your max tokens. But here we have an additional argument to the chat completion call that is not normally included in our previous API calls. So now that we have prompt player on top of this, we can add some additional things that prompt player knows about. So in this case, we have PL underscore tags is equal to a list of strings. And these are tags, comma separated inside this list, that we can attach to the request. That way, if we wanna be able to categorize and search through all of our previous requests, we can do that very easily by using these tag names. So in this case, I'm asking a question about who the first president of the United States was. I'm gonna tag this with US presidents. So we'll see how that works more in a second. After we send this request, we take our response variable and we print it to the console. So nothing new there. So we can run this real quick and wait for it to come back. Sure enough, there's our response. So we have all the typical things that we normally have in our response. The answer to our question from the assistant role is the first president of the United States was George Washington. We see how many tokens, et cetera. So now if we jump back over to our dashboard for prompt layer, we can see the most recent 
request that was logged is this one right here. So it cost us 0 0.000625. We can see that it was 38 tokens. If we go back, we can see sure enough, total tokens was 38, so that's good. And you'll notice somewhere in here, where is it? There it is. US presidents is the tag. So this is helpful because if we go up here and we search for US presidents, then it's gonna pull up the two different requests. This one we just did and one that I did earlier while I was testing this out that have those tags. So you can see how useful that can be for you know categorizing and being able to you know, organize and look at the different uh, logs for your various requests that you made in the past. You can even export this stuff. You can fine tune your model, which is really crazy. We'll talk more about that in a future video. In this video, we just wanna show you how simple it was to get up and running with Prompt Layer on top of the OpenAI API. And it's as simple as a couple lines of code, a pip install with your virtual environment activated, you know, generating a key, exporting that key as an environment variable, and logging into your dashboard and viewing the logs of all of your requests to the OpenAI API. So that's it for this video. Thanks a lot, and we'll catch you in the next one.